For the grid and value boot camp number two, you need the worksheet, a ruler that has clear and visible measurements, and a drawing pencil kit or your regular pencil if you are in class and doing this, so you're not making it up during a tutorial. I do ask that you actually use the drawing pencil kit. The first thing you're going to do is write your name and your block number. So if I write Miss Orchard, and I could say, let's say I'm in block three, okay? We're going to create a one by one grid on the Statue of Liberty on the left and the box on the right. For the purpose of illustration, I'm going to make the boxes on Liberty with my mahogany pencil so it shows up better. I do recommend that you make your grid lines with a regular erasable pencil first in case you make a mistake. We're going to line up zero on your ruler, which is sometimes the end of the ruler and sometimes it's this first long notch. And we're gonna make a mark at every whole number. So one, two, three, and four. We're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. So make sure zero is on your left. This is important so you don't get lines that are not perfectly straight up and down. One, two, three, and four. And you will be able to see just a regular pencil because the graphite is shiny. Take your ruler, hold it with two points of contact. Three is better, so I've got my index finger, my middle finger, and my thumb. I'm gonna pivot from one point to another draw a line, continue across, we're going to do the same thing on the other edge, so we're going to put zero on the top right corner, we're going to make a mark at one, two, three, and four, we're going to do the same thing on the left edge, so zero is at the top. Be consistent about where zero is, just in case there's tiny, tiny mistakes and maybe it's not exactly the measurements you think it is. I'm gonna connect them across again. And I always use more than one point of contact on my ruler so that it doesn't wiggle around while I'm drawing. And I do push down with moderate pressure to help it stay in place. So we've got our grid on Liberty. Now we're gonna draw our grid on the other box using the same method. So in my drawing kit, I have a variety of kinds of graphite or densities of graphite. The regular HB pencil, you'll see that there are markings on the end. Let me get this out of here. So I have my HB pencil. That's just like a regular pencil, okay? We're gonna do the same process again. So zero is on the left edge. One, two, three, and four. Do it again on the bottom. So ruler skills are important, not just for this particular skill set, but as a life skill. Learning how to use measurements and make straight lines is something that comes in handy. You may want to draw your lines lightly in case you do goof up. Because if you erase and you can see the other former marks, it might get confusing. So because I have my marks outside of Liberty on the left, I can actually just mark up the right side of my empty box here on the right. I'm gonna put zero on the top right corner. Got one, two, three, four. These are five by five inch boxes. Line it up. There we go, okay? So now your task is with your drawing kit, let me take out all the pencils here for the sake of illustration. You should have six different pencils, a putty eraser, a tortillon, and a hand sharpener in there. Not all of the hand sharpeners have a little catch for the debris. So if you don't have a catch for the debris, just make sure you sharpen and then take care of your debris so you don't leave it on the table. You can also use the electric sharpener at the front of the room. Okay, so the pencils have different densities of graphite. HB is a regular, like a regular pencil that you use in your every school, everyday schoolwork. 
Tubi is a little bit softer, so it will be darker. 4B is even softer, so even darker. 6B, that will create the darkest possible values. 2H is very light, so it's easy to make light sketches with it. And B is actually between HB and 2B, so it's a little bit softer than a regular drawing pencil, okay? So I do recommend that you sketch very lightly with your 2H or HB, and then block in your values with the other corresponding pencils. To illustrate how to do this activity, I'm gonna walk you through the boxes. Just like with the first grid and value boot camp, you can label these boxes with coordinates if that helps you to understand it better. So let's take a look at, we'll call this A, B, C, D, and E. We're gonna look at D1. We're gonna map out the values in D1. So if we're in D1, we can see we have a little triangle here. I'm just gonna sketch out that line. We have a slope that goes about from that same point to about the middle of the bottom line. So you can sketch that in as well. We're just really lightly sketching in our forms for now. We have a line that curves off and then slopes down and hits this right side of the line, right about in the middle, a little bit lower than the middle. So we're gonna kind of eyeball the distance between this line and the line we're going to create. So really look at that distance. This is a challenging image, but I believe that you can do it. It's a zoomed in picture of the Statue of Liberty. It is a photograph, so it has a lot of value in it. Okay, so we've got some basic shapes. And you'll also see we have more subtle variations in tone here. We've got this little shape right here and feel free to draw on the printout as well. So we're gonna sketch this in. We're gonna look at our proportions. So look at the distance between the line that we're creating and the right side of the box. Okay, we've got a little line going right here. Taking it one line at a time. It slopes so it gets a little bit further away from this line as we work our way down. We've got a line that comes north of center on this left line, curves very slightly and then hits the bottom here. So let's try to recreate that, sketching very lightly. Another line right here, so it comes from this intersection, and it hits almost in the middle of that bottom line, okay? So here's where the fun with the value comes in. If I take my 6B, I've got some really intense values right here, right? So with graphite, if I push down really hard, with my 6B, I'm gonna outline it first. I'm gonna work in little circles. And if you are at a scratchy kind of table, you might wanna work on top of a folder or on top of your portfolio. So you don't get that scratchy texture interfering with it. And you can see it can really saturate. It gets really dark very quickly, much darker than you could with your regular pencil. This triangle up here, likewise, is very dark. And then we've got some lighter tones. So we're gonna to switch to our lighter pencil. So if I go to B, which is a little bit softer than your regular pencil, I can shade in this form here. A little scratchy right now, right? So I'm trying to mimic this value. So I can see it starts out light. It gets a little bit darker towards this edge. Got a shadow there. I'm going outside the box a little bit, but because I can erase my graphite, I'm not worrying about it too much. With my Torteon, I can also blend so it's a little bit smoother. I'm gonna blend these dark areas too, okay? Try not to use your fingertip if you can help it for this lesson because there are such small areas and such small details. I'm gonna use my 4B for this part of my value. So I can see this is darker than this very slightly. So I'm gonna shade it in. A little scratchy so far, lightly shading, so I'm barely touching the pencil to the surface. And I can blend it with my Torteon. Okay. So 
So if I'm worried about losing some of my Valium, if your putty eraser isn't unwrapped, you can go ahead and unwrap it. Probably it's unwrapped by now, but if you're the first class to use these drawing kits, it's not unwrapped. Just like with your pencil debris, make sure you throw that wrapper away. So putty erasers, they're nice because you can form them into a really precise point, okay? So we're gonna erase. I'm going a little too far into that darker value I know I'm gonna need to create, so I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna pick up this light line that I know I have, so I'm gonna pinch my eraser into a little point. And pick it up just a little bit. If I pick it up too much, I can always go back in and I can add more value. Okay. So I've got a medium tone here. I'm gonna use my 2B. I'm gonna to try to match this value. So it's pretty dark, but not as dark as the shape that's already there. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade it in. Really take my time with it. Okay, this kind of assignment takes a long time to do correctly. I want you to take your time, okay? That's why the deadlines are so long. Take your time, make sure you're doing it right because the practice is gonna help you in the long run to be successful on the projects, right? So practice, projects, they all are tied together. Okay, so far so good, it's getting there. We've got a medium value and we've got some bright highlights in this shape right here where we have our contour lines. So I'm actually going to start with my 2H which is my lightest possible value. I'm just gonna shade it in very, very lightly. And blend it with my Tortillon. And I have some of the graphite from my other blending activities on here as well. Graphite Tortillons and charcoal Tortillons should not cross, so make sure you are keeping them separate. I'm gonna form my putty eraser into a point. And erase, okay. I'm gonna erase along the contour of that line. It's hard to see on the camera. You can also just look at the particular square you're working from. It's gonna erase that contour to make it pop back out. And you can see there's also a darker edge to the contour which helps to make it pop. So I'm gonna take my 2B. I'm gonna shade right along that edge there. Got a little sliver here that's also a bit darker. And then blend it with my Tortillon. I can make that highlight pop again. I'm taking my eraser and just pulling gently from a point, okay? So that's how you do Liberty. You wanna do one square at a time, really try to match your values. There's very little in this photograph that's just the value of the paper, okay? On the other side, for the Captain America picture, it is a picture of an artwork, right? It's not a photograph, so the values are a little bit more dramatic. It does tell you to make a half inch grid, so I'm gonna illustrate how to do that. With your ruler, and again, I'm gonna use a colored pencil so you can see it better. The half inch mark, we're gonna put zero on the left side. The half inch mark is right about here. It's the tall mark between each whole number. So we're gonna go half, whole number, half, whole number, half, whole number. And the reason I want you to do this is because sometimes when you have a lot of detail in your reference, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, and then halves on the edge. If you have a lot of details in your reference, it's easier to be successful if you have smaller squares because that breaks the information into smaller pieces for you, okay? So if it's easier for you to see your grid lines with a colored pencil or a pen, you can go over them with a colored pencil or a pen once you've drawn them in pencil first. Try drawing them in pencil first in case you make a mistake because drawing a grid is part of this boot camp knowledge. The other part of the boot camp knowledge is using the art kits to match your values. Okay, zeros at the top left corner, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, okay? 
We're going to do that on the other side as well. So we're going to go half, full, half, full, half, full, half, full, half, full, half. Now we're going to match them up. Okay, so we're going to match them up. I am pointing my measurements away from me so that it's easier to see on the camera. When you do this on your own artwork, I do recommend you have the measurements pointed at you so it's easier for you to see if your marks are lining up. We're gonna do the same process over here. So if you have your drawing kit already, you can actually use 2H to draw your grid because it is very light, or you can still use your regular pencil. So we're going to go half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole. And do the same thing on the bottom, okay? So you're gonna draw your grid. And then recreate the lines, the shapes, and the values that you see in the picture, just like we did on Liberty, okay? If you do need me to show you how to finish the grid, I can absolutely show you that in person, but I'm pretty sure after doing the Liberty example, you already know how to do that. 